Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've been playing around a lot with NFC tags and using them as ways to automate some things in my home. So for example, when I sit down here to make a video, I have to turn some lights on, I have to turn off the air handler, and I've been jumping around to different apps and it's been driving me crazy. I wanted to automate the process. And the other day I did a video using an NFC tag like this one to automate a music player. And I said, you know what, I bet you there's a way I could automate some of the annoyances I have around my house to make things more efficient around here. And sure enough, I was able to figure some stuff out. So what we're going to do in this video is show you some of the things that I've learned so far, like turning this light bulb on here just by scanning my phone to this tag, if I can get it there. There we go. And also look at some of the other projects that I've been playing around with this weekend. It's a lot of fun. I think there's a lot of utility here, and I think there's a lot that I don't know yet. So I'm making this video to kind of show you what I've set up so far, and then maybe get some feedback from all of you as to some future projects we can do using these little NFC tags. These tags are very inexpensive. I've got a whole bag of them here that didn't cost me all that much money. And in addition to just working as little switches, you can actually write data to these things, erase it, and then write some other data to them as well. So I'll give you a little hint as to some of the other use cases of this towards the end of the video. But let's start off with some home automation tasks. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that just about everything you're going to see in this video I paid for with my own funds. However, we will be looking at a Synology NAS with some home hub stuff. And that Synology NAS came in free of charge from Synology, who is an occasional sponsor here on the channel. But beyond that, no one is paying for this review. No one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how we can automate ourselves with little tags that we can drop all over the house. Now, today's video is going to be focused mostly on the iPhone, namely using their Shortcuts app to do some of the things that we want to automate here in the house. I am not opposed to using Android for this. It's just that I just started this project and I'm most familiar with Shortcuts and HomeKit, which is Apple's uh, home automation uh, infrastructure. But I do want to come back and do another video on the Android side. So I would love to hear from all of you as to how you're automating with Android down in the comments section. And we'll do another video just like this one, but focus primarily on the Android platform. Now, why I like shortcuts on the iPhone and on the Mac is because it is incredibly powerful. So if you've ever used If This Then That on the web, which is also called IFTTT, you know that you can connect different web services together through IFTTT and take data from one place and bring it somewhere else. You can do that on your Mac here with shortcuts, or on your iPhone for that matter. And if you go over to the app section, you can get a feel for which installed apps you have that support automation. So for example, on my Mac, I have a photo editor called Pixelmator Pro, which is awesome. And as you can see here, it's got a bunch of things that it can do through shortcuts. So I could have a folder, for example, sitting on my desktop. And every time a file appears in that folder, I can have Pixelmator do something to the photo in that folder and then move it someplace else, for example. So you can just have all sorts of crazy automations going on. But today what we're going to do is turn a light bulb on and off. Now these tags are not very smart. They don't know what state the light bulb is in. Now on a simple level, we could have one tag turn the light bulb on and another tag turn the light bulb off. But with a little bit of logic, very simple logic, we can have a single tag trigger off a little script that will look at the state of the bulb. And if it's on, it'll turn the bulb off. And if the bulb is off, it'll turn it back on. And what we're going to do to set that up is go over to shortcuts here and code it up real quick. And this is not very complicated at all. What I'm going to do here is just do a search for if. And as you can see, we've got a scripting option here. And we're just going to drop that onto uh, shortcuts here. And if you're doing this on the phone, what you can do here is click on add action and do a search for if and just drop it in. And everything we're going to be doing on the Mac will function exactly the same way on the phone. Again, it is like doing it on the Mac for simplicity's sake. Now, what we have to do is tell shortcuts here what to look for. So we're going to set our input to home accessory here. Now, when I put my mouse over this, right now it doesn't seem to want to select it. So if I go down and then back up, it lets me do it here. This might just be a little bug that they'll end up fixing probably in a future iteration. And when I do that, you can see it pulls up my full list of HomeKit devices. 
So what I've got here is my test bulb that we want to be looking at. So I'm going to select that and click on Done here. And when I do that, you can see right now it's looking to see whether or not the bulb is on. So given that, what we wanted to do is turn the bulb off if it is on. So I'm going to do a search here for another function called Control Home. And I'm just going to drag it underneath here. And what will happen now is it's going to ask me to select a scene or accessory to control when this condition is met. So what I'm going to do is click on that. And once again, we've got our list of devices here, and I can go down and select the test bulb. Incidentally, I could add other devices to the list to also fire off when we do this, and I'll show you an example of how I control multiple devices in this way in a minute. But right now, we're going to keep it simple and stick to one. And so if the test bulb is on, what I'm going to do is have it set the bulb to off. And so right now, the uh, setting here is off. If I click on this, it sets it to on. I could even go further here and control how uh, bright it is as well. Um, but because we wanted to turn the bulb off when it recognizes the bulb being on, we're just going to set it to the off state and click done. But if the bulb is off, we want to turn it back on, right? So we have in this if statement here an otherwise and in some languages they call this an else, uh, what we'll do here is that if the bulb is off, the otherwise is turn it on. So we're going to grab control home here and drop it underneath otherwise. And what I'm going to do is pretty much what we just did before, but the opposite. So we're going to go over to our test bulb again. And rather than have it be set to off, we're going to click it here and have it turn on. And I can, of course, control how bright it's going to be when it does turn back on, but I'm going to leave it at full brightness. And then I'm going to click Done. And now we've pretty much got our logic here written out. And what I can do is hit the Play button here to test it. So let's click on it. And what it should do here is turn the bulb on. And now if I click on it again, it will turn it off. And it looks like our logic is perfect. So now how do we integrate it with the tag? Well, let's go over to the phone and set that up. So here on the phone, you can see that the Studio Test Lamp shortcut that I set up on the Mac is now accessible on the phone. That's because it syncs everything up through my iCloud account. And to test it here, I can just go ahead and push it. And as you can see, it's going to execute that logic even without scanning the code to turn the light bulb on and off. Likewise, I could go in here and hold down the shortcut and click on Edit and make some adjustments to it if I wanted to, and those would sync back to my Mac. But what we want to do is get this tag into the mix. So if I go over here to Automation on the phone, and I click on the plus icon here, I can have it do something. Now, you might be tempted to click on Create Home Automation, but we're not going to do that. We're going to click on Personal Automation. And what I'm going to look for on the list is NFC, when I scan an NFC tag. Now, I think some of the older iPhone models don't support this feature, but the newer ones do. So I'm going to click on that, but you can see all the other things that we can use to trigger the light bulb here. Uh, so let's go to NFC. And what it wants me to do is scan the tags. I'm going to click on Scan, and we're just going to put my tag under here. You can see it scanned it. And we're going to call this Test Bulb. And now we have the tag registered with the phone. And if I click Next, I can add an action. And when we click on the Add Action button, we're going to see a very similar interface to what we saw before. But because we've already built out the logic, we don't need to recreate it. We just need to point this action at the shortcut we just made. So let's go over here to Add Action. And I already started searching for it here. But what you want to look for is Shortcuts. And I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to select Run Shortcut. And now you'll see a little option up here for Shortcuts. I'm going to select that. And then I'm just going to go over to the shortcut we created a minute ago called Studio Test Lamp. And so now I'm going to click Next. And what I'm also going to do here is turn off Ask Before Running. And the reason why is that I don't want to have to do something when I scan the tag. I want the tag to get scanned and the command to execute automatically. But maybe I want it to notify me at least so that I know it was able to scan it successfully. So I'm going to click on Done. So let's test this out now. I've got the tag here on the desk. I'm going to tap my phone on it here to get it to scan. I got the notification. The light turned on. 
So far, so good here. Let's scan it again, and it's going to execute that shortcut and turn the light off. Now, the reason why I like to build a shortcut first and then attach it to different triggers is that you can use the same logic without having to keep rebuilding it over and over again. So for example, we attach the shortcut to the tag here, but I could also ask our favorite voice assistant to do the same thing, studio test lamp. And so what happened here is I just stated the name of the shortcut and Siri was able to run, run that logic and turn the bulb on, but then I could scan the tag here and have it execute again. Likewise, if I've got this uh, shortcut in a bunch of different actions, if I change the shortcut once, all of those actions will get updated. So let me show you an example of that back on the Mac. So on the Mac here, I searched for play sound, which is another action that can be taken in one of your shortcuts. And I'm just gonna drop it in here at the end of the if statement. And so what's gonna happen now when I click the button is that our light bulb will turn on and then it's going to play a sound on the Mac. And if I push it again, I get that sound. Now, because the shortcut here is syncing up with my phone, if we go back here now and scan the uh, tag again with the phone, we should hear the phone make a sound. Let me turn the volume up here and we'll scan that, and you can hear the phone now made the dinging sound. So I can basically make one change to a shortcut and have everything that that shortcut is executing in get updated along with it. But you can also have it control multiple things. So for example, when I sit down to work on my videos, I wanted a very quick and easy way to turn the lights on down here, but also turn off the noisy air handler on the other side of the room. And that's what I set up here inside of my uh, shortcuts app. So uh, right now, if I come downstairs, the studio lights are typically off and the air handler is on. And under that condition, what I want it to do when the tag is scanned is turn the studio lights on and the air handler off, which is what happens here. And what I'm gonna do real quick is just get out of the app and we're going to uh, put the air handler up on screen here on the other side of the room. And what should happen here when I scan this tag is that my lights should shut off and the air handler would, will turn on. Let's see if it does that. So we'll hit the scan button here. It plays the sound like it did before. Off goes the lights and up comes the air handler. But now it's a little dark and noisy in here. So if we want to reverse the process, we again scan the tag. So let's do that real quick here. We'll just do that quick scan. We got the beep. The lights will come back on and the air handler turns off and we are back to where we were before. And you can see just how cool it is to walk down here, do a tap and get everything to where I want it to be. And this is just the beginning. I've got a lot of other things that I'm probably going to automate using these little tags. Now I do like using Wise Smart Home products here around the house because they're super cheap and they work pretty well. So we were just playing around with this Wise Smart Bulb on the uh, lamp here, but I also have some Wise Smart Plugs that are controlling all the lights down here in the studio. And I didn't want to have to go out and buy more expensive HomeKit compatible bulbs and smart plugs to get this project to work. So I went out and found something really useful called HomeBridge. This is a utility that runs on just about anything, including the Raspberry Pi on Linux, Mac, and Windows. And because I have a Synology NAS that can run Docker containers, I opted for the Docker version of HomeBridge. And what you do in HomeBridge is install these plugins that connect up, in this case, to WISE, and connect those WISE devices with HomeKit. And all of my bulbs and plugs and everything just popped up right away. The cameras require a little bit more work, which we'll maybe do in a future video, but for uh, the purposes of this project, turning things on and off, uh, this was almost turnkey. It was really easy to get this up and running. And you'll also see that I added a Sensibo plugin because my Sensibo uh, little remote control, which is supposed to be compatible with HomeKit, has never actually attached itself to my HomeKit setup here. So I downloaded their plugin here, and that worked great through HomeBridge. And this has been amazing how seamless this has all turned out. And because I have Apple TVs here in the house that allow you to access your smart home when you're not at home through your Apple account, I'm able to control everything remotely through that as well. So, so far so good here on HomeBridge. And if you wanna see how to install this and get it working in a Docker environment, I am happy to do a video on it. Just let me know 
down in the comment section. What's kind of neat about these tags is that in addition to just giving you a unique identification number, you can also write data to them. So if I read this tag that I have here on the desk real quick, let's do that, uh, you'll see that it has some degree of storage available on it, only about 540 bytes, very minimal, but that might be enough to write out a URL for your business or something else. So if we go over here to write on this app that I'm running here called NFC Tools on the iPhone, and there's a bunch of other utilities that do similar things, I can add a whole bunch of stuff to a tag and have that tag execute things universally across different platforms. So in this case, I just want to put a URL, a link to my YouTube channel here. So what I'm going to do is tap on right here and scan this tag. And once the phone comes in contact with it, it's going to write the URL out to the tag here. And now we have the URL stored as data on this little tag. So let me get out my Android phone and see what happens when I scan it. All right, so now with that data written to the tag, I'll take out my Android phone here, and when it gets close to the tag, you can see it automatically pulls up the web browser and brings the user right over to my YouTube channel. But if I grab the tag that we were using earlier for the light bulb on the iPhone, if I scan the tag here, we're not going to get anything. It basically just says a new tag has been collected with no data in it, and that's because the Shortcuts app doesn't actually write any data to the tag, it's only reading its unique identifier to know what script to fire off. But what's really cool about these tags is that they are rewritable. So let's say I wanted to use a different URL, which I've programmed in here. So I want to take viewers over to my Amazon page. And so if I tap on right here and scan the same tag we just wrote to before, we now have a new URL stored in there. And if I take the Android phone over to it and scan it, as you can see, it brings us to a totally different place. Isn't that wild? So these tags are pretty useful in a whole bunch of different ways, and I'm just scratching the surface here. So we're going to do more on this in the near future, but I just wanted to show you some things that you can do uh, very quickly and easily with your existing stuff to maybe automate things a little bit better or have something that can trigger a website or something for customers who come into your shop or something like that. Lots of things that you can do with these things, and there's a whole bunch of different form factors that you can buy them in. And the best part is they're very affordable as well. So let me know down in the comments section some things I should be thinking about related to NFC tags that you would like to see in the near future. And of course, I definitely want to see some solutions we can do on the Android side, similar to what we did here on the iPhone. So definitely let me know uh, what you're thinking down in the comments section. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.